Okay, so today on World Wellness Team and TV podcast, we got Dr. B. Could you tell hey, us yeah. where you're located today? Toronto, Canada. Okay, from the six. Six I. Six I. Right. <laughs> Dance like there's no tomorrow. Well, could you tell us about your beginnings? Sure, sure. I started out um, in hip hop music in the early 2000s. Um, I worked with uh, some some pretty heavy hitters. I worked with Tony Touch, um, okay. Elephant Man, uh, Swizz Beats. You might have heard of him. Yeah. Uh, Just Blaze. Some few people from Rockefeller Records. But I had a great time. I worked with Black Moon, um, Evil yeah. D, and the Beat Minders. Those guys are the best. Shout out to Evil D. He's just like. The best person ever. He gave me one of my very first production uh, classes. Yeah, and he, and he he doesn't do that. He doesn't, you know, just take people under his wing and say, "Yo, let me teach you how to mess around on the MPC." So, I'll always cherish those moments I spent with him. And um, I became very good friends with the executioners, uh, Mr. Sinister. Yeah. He was signed to Loud Records uh, at the time, and. Um, at the time, I was living in New York, and I was uh, acting as a manager for a couple of artists. And um, I met a, a lot of interesting people. I met some amazing uh, uh, record executives. One thing led to another, and they offered yeah. me a label deal. And um, I wasn't expecting that. And then from there, we signed a bunch of artists. I had the opportunity to work with, like I said, Black Moon on, a, on an album or two. Um, we worked with brand Nubian Sadat X. I mean, that was really a lot of fun, yeah. uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't, um, it really wasn't for me. You know, I really wasn't that happy. Um, my, like for me, my, they, the, the distribution company wanted me to play a role. Right. And back then they need somebody, the CEO, you know, to play their part. I don't know if you remember yeah. the videos back then, but back then, oh, yeah. Yeah, you had Damon Dash from Rockefeller all in the videos. You had Sean P. Diddy Combs all in the videos. Yeah, I remember the, the famous Suge comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, coming down front. If you're an executive and you're on the business side, be on the business side. Don't turn around and be in a nigga's video. And, you know, you had these CEOs playing a part in these music videos and songs, and they wanted me to do that. Yeah. And that's just not who I am. I'm more of a behind the scenes type of person. I, I don't crave the spotlight. Yeah. Um, sure. And it just wasn't for me. So I left. I went back to Canada and I took a break for about 15 years. And it just, I had a lot of bad experiences and it put a bad taste in my mouth. So I didn't even make anything music for years. Yeah. And then in, um, I would say in 2017, 2018, I really wanted to get back into it. But I realized that the industry had completely changed. I mean, even yeah. the way you make yeah. music is completely changed, right? Now everything is touchscreen and standalone machines and you don't even need a computer to make, uh, if you're working with certain types of uh, equipment. Yeah. So I, it took me time to kind of get used to the new technology and to get back in the swing of things. But for me, when I wanted to release music, I wanted to do it my way, right? I make uh, electronic dance music mostly. And that's the music that I really connect with and I'm passionate about. So I realized that I don't have to deal with all the BS and the crap from the labels and sales and marketing teams and all that crap. I can just have a direct relationship with my fans and my listeners. And yeah. I can do things the way I want to do. And um, I enjoy doing that because at the end of the day, I wasn't relying on my success from the past. I didn't really use it. And I don't think it really helped in the world of electronic music. I mean, it's great yeah. that I work with Swiss, but in, at the end of the day, no one really cares. People want to hear what you have. And if it's good, they'll rock with it. If they don't like it, well, maybe they'll like the next one. So that's what I've been doing since 2019. And since then, I've released over 50 singles. Um, I have probably 11 12 000 monthly listeners on spotify now yeah and uh yeah it's going well yeah okay that sounds great so what would you say have been the positives or negatives with the change with the technology i think 
I think what we have is not enough variety of art. Uh, depending on the genre that you're looking at, now, if we're going to talk about hip hop, I have to be honest with you, there's not a lot of variety. A lot of it is the same. A lot of it sounds the same. It took me two years to figure out Migos was a group. I thought it was one yeah. guy, <laughs> you yeah. know? So, I mean, I, I think they're great. They're awesome. But let's be honest, they all kind of sound the same. Um, so I think the number one mistake that producers make now, specifically hip hop producers, is that they view themselves as producers. That's the problem. Yeah. The problem is in this day and age, it's not 1995 anymore, right? In 95, in the early 2000s, it was make a beat, give it to some dude, let him rap on it and hope it goes to number one. In this day and age now, producers need to change. Producers need to stop focusing on, I'm making a beat and send it out to a million people and that's how I'm gonna get my name out there. Yeah. You're waste Personally, I think you're wasting your time because you're relying on somebody else to provide you success. Yeah. You're relying on somebody else to complete your art. Your art's not finished. It's only 50% done. When you have no form of control of any kind, then how can you steer the ship properly? Producers need to change their mentality and say, I'm the artist. This is my song. I would like you to feature on my song. This is how I would like you to express the vocals. And then talk, have a conversation. Talk about the art, talk about the vocals, talk about the, the personality that you're bringing to it, talk about the character that the vocalist is playing and then get it done and then get it released. And if you feel that vocalist is not being professional, is not doing the job that, they, that they're supposed to do, guess what? You can find another vocalist and yeah. move on and get the song done. And then what you do is once it's complete, make sure it's mixed professionally, mastered professionally and release it. And then do that a hundred more times. That's that. what I would suggest. And what yeah. your fans and listeners are going to realize is that, hey, this guy's making, or this woman, I don't mean necessarily a man, but this individual, this artist <coughs> is making great music and I'm connecting with it. And there's some variety here and they're, you know, maybe doing some things differently. When you're relying on other people to kind of provide you with a certain level of success or to finish your accomplishments, Man, good luck with that. That's not going to, I mean, unless you're the most successful person in the world, <laughs> you know, people have lives, right? People are doing shit. People get busy. People get sick. COVID's like killing everybody. So I would suggest that you focus on yourself. Take more control of your art. Don't stop looking at yourself as a beat maker and more of a producer. Yeah. And give yourself some time and experience. Right. Start with one song and let's see how it goes. That's what I did. We all start with one. Right now. I've, I'm about to release my 51st single uh, next week. So it's all a growth and a steady progression. But I really think, yeah, that's the we need to change that mentality. Yeah. So when you're producing. How would you describe your process? Oh, chaotic. <laughs> it's chaos. <laughs> It's a lot better now. It's a lot better. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll share a little secret with you. I've never told anybody on a podcast. Okay. When I first started, um, when I was making music in 2019, even I would say for the first six months of 2020, I, I had this normal process. Yeah. I would make something. I would start making something with a specific intention. Most of the time, it ended up being something else, which was fine. Then I would hear it think it's good. About an hour later, I would become incredibly insecure and think it's the worst thing ever. And I would go to my computer system, I go file and I would click delete. And right before it, you know, it always asks you, do you wish to confirm the deletion? I would wait. And then I would go to my wife and I'm like, can you hear this? Cause I think this song really sucks. And then she listened and she's like, this is amazing. What were you doing? I said, well, I almost deleted it. She's like, are you insane? Don't delete this. Yeah. My point is it took me a while to gain that confidence that this is what my fans and listeners want to hear, right? It takes you a while to kind of figure that out and figure that process. Once I kind of figured that out, I ended up gaining more confidence. And um, now that's not my creative process. It's not chaotic. Now I sit down, um, 
usually smoke a bunch of weed. And then I just, <laughs> I just get on my keyboard or I play the drums, mess around with the guitar or something. And, and um, I see that I comes out of it. Yeah, a vibe out of it, yeah. I know yeah, but a lot of, know. most of the time I go in with a specific um, idea in mind or frame. Like the other day, I went to the studio and I had this idea to make like a really hardcore deep techno track. I haven't made one of those in a really long time. I wanted to do something super hardcore underground. I made something more hip hop related, like the complete difference. Like my fingers wanted to do something else. So I just kind of go with the feeling and see what it, and I just take one step at a time and just kind of go with the flow and just kind of see where the music journey takes me, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of my process. But if you're actually watching me, um, I spend a lot of time like screwing around. Like I'll be on the keyboard, just like messing around with sounds and different melodies for like an hour until I figure, oh, okay, this is something cool. This is I can mess with. And then I'll go over to the drums and go. And then, you know, I'll figure something out and then say, okay, well, maybe not that. Maybe I like this. And I kind of tweak it and go from there. But my process, uh, I've made a lot of opera music with my uh, visual album that's coming out. My yeah. process with classical music and opera music is completely different. It is completely different. And it is surprisingly organic for me. I was surprised how fast I was able to make opera music. Um, for, for me, yeah. it's complicated. It's very slow. It's extremely dramatic. Uh, the sounds you need to use are 99% real instruments, but I always like to add some other sounds or some other tones or a sample or something that will cause the audience to like say, oh, what was that? What was this? But at the same time, not take you out of the element from the classic 14th century sound, which is what I'm trying to do for my album because the album yeah. set in the 14th century. So I'm trying to keep it as 100% as authentic as uh. possible. So if you were in the 14th century, you would literally use these instruments. And those are the instruments I used to make the album. Like I only, I didn't use like a, a regular kick drum. I only use kettle drums and steel yeah. drums uh, and specific violins that they had in the 14th century. So yeah, I took the time to do that. And it really came together quite quickly. And the opera singers, we connected right away. They knew right away what to do and we wrote yeah. the songs together and it came out great yeah so depending on what i'm working on the process is kind of different but i was surprised on how fast the the chamber music came together like i made some songs i made in two hours uh, yeah. which was which is crazy because with hip-hop or any other genre i can't make a song in two hours it takes me way too long right it'll take me some yeah. songs i'm working on it for two days right so so yeah it sounds varied in the different types of music that you could do. Who would you consider to be top five producers or just musical acts that you feel are at the top of their profession and why? Oh, I don't know if they're at the top of their profession. I can't really uh, comment on that. Yeah. But I can tell you on people um, that I like, I like not necessarily uh, producers. I like musicians and I like art and yeah. I like, um, I really enjoy vocalists and hearing their interpretation, right? Like I like one of my favorite groups is the Chainsmokers. Uh, they make like a variety of like different music and I like their sound. I love Diplo. Um, I also love, um, I'm really into Jack Harlow now. I think, I think he's really cool as a vocalist. I really like him. Um, I wish we got more Eminem uh, production. I've heard some of his production from years back. I thought it was incredible. Yeah, like, I'm like, why doesn't he do? Yeah. yeah, well, like, why doesn't he do more of this? Like, I think he's a, um, as good as a lyricist as he is. I personally think he's a better producer. Yeah. And he's a, a vocalist and he's an amazing vocalist. So that's just my two cents. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you were into the hip hop. Oh, sorry. And one more thing. I, I got, I really like uh, um, Mike Wilmade. I love, I love his stuff too. 
oh, okay. in the States. Yeah. He's cool, man. <laughs> so you were, we were working with a lot of hip hop producers back in the day. What's your thoughts on the rise of Drake and Tory Lanez and The Weeknd and the whole Toronto impact in the last decade or so? It's amazing. Um, I think it's surprising. You know, it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but I love the fact that there's so many talented people that live here. Um, I came across um, another artist, you know, what the heck is his name? Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, that's it. It's, his name is Sick. Anybody who hasn't heard of him, check him out. On Instagram, it's S with an exclamation mark, CK. He's from Toronto. Yeah. This guy has over a million monthly listeners, and you've never heard of him. Yeah. You've never heard of him. This guy is talented. Let me tell you. And he's right here in Toronto. This guy is a singer, he's a producer, he's a remixer, he plays, uh, I think, two instruments, at least, that I know of. Yeah. Super talented. So my point is, Toronto's got a lot of crazy, talented, um, artistic people in, in, in a variety of different genres. And I'm really proud of uh, Drake and everybody else who came from Toronto. I mean, um, it puts a lot of light and attention you know, on the city, which is pretty cool. And um, like you have Maestro in the background. Bro, I was like the yeah. biggest Maestro Fresh West when I was a kid. I mean, I think he's cool. And he seems like a really nice guy. Like I see him on like online yeah. and stuff. He seems like a genuine, humble person. He doesn't seem like a like a bad person or anything like yeah, that. I'm so it's nice to see sense. people be nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. It was just recently announced that Rolling Loud is coming to Toronto. Did you ever think Toronto would get a big festival of that nature? I guess it's always possible. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sure about that. But when you see huge festivals like Drake is putting on and other people, they've been like massive shows here. I'm not, I'm not surprised. You know, I mean, Toronto is probably uh, the best city to live in, in, in all of Canada. Um, uh, at least I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's I. I mean, everybody's gonna go. It's gonna get a lot of love and attention. So yeah, man, I'm happy for the city, and it's gonna be great for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what could you tell us a few of your projects that people could go check check out? Yeah, for sure. Well, I have a new song coming out next week on May 10th. It's called Unreal. Okay. Um, that's pretty cool. That's. Uh, there's like maybe four or five uh, Kanye West samples that I chopped up yeah. and I put it into the song. Yeah. I like using um, a lot of his crazy comments that he makes, but I like to yeah. chop them up and then put them like remix them and put them in my song and make it into like a positive statement. Yeah. Right? So if you listen to my song Shakespeare, uh, that's what that song's about. That song is about if you're an artist, uh, who creates any type of art, you affect the world around you through your art, then you're a modern day Shakespeare. So I sampled Kanye's West, his voice saying Shakespeare. And he says, I am Shakespeare. But when he was saying that in real life, he was going on this condescending, egotistical rant, telling everybody how great he is. But I just kept the I am Shakespeare part I am Shakespeare. And, and made it into something positive. And, and it was great because I collaborated with um, Arella uh, uh, Jeller is her name. She's in the States and she's a very well-known uh, painter and artist. We did a music video together and I showed the whole video. I directed it. It's about, I chose one particular artist and focused on all her paintings, her art, her shows, you guys can check it out on YouTube. Uh, again, it's called Shakespeare. So that was a really uh, artistic and great moment for me. Um, um, anybody else, you can also check out some of my songs uh, called Bad Guy. That song is about um, my character is a forensic psychologist and he gives uh, group therapy, yeah. music therapy to some of the world's deadliest mafia bosses. So that's, there's uh, Lucky Luciano's in it, um, Scarface, yeah. Uh, the Lady from Queen of the South, it goes on and on. So that's a pretty cool track. I have another song called Anderson Cooper, which is a pretty high tempo track. It's very positive. That's pretty cool. 
Um, but yeah, I would encourage everybody to go to Spotify and check out my catalog. I, like I said, I got over 50 songs out. Yeah. Feel free to go through it and um, let me know what you guys think. Okay. So is there any lasting words you want viewers to know? about? Yeah. Well, you can definitely... You could definitely check me out on Twitter. Uh, my um, my uh, my name is I A M D R B. The number six. I'm on Instagram. I underscore A M D R dot underscore B. Um, you, please, for anybody who hasn't seen my trailer, Dragon Fire on YouTube, go check that out. That gives you a nice idea of what the visual album is going to be about and the storyline, and it's heavily influenced by the Greek gods and. Um, uh, I would say the uh, Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, that type of storyline and concept. So if you guys are into any of that type of stuff, Greek yeah. mythology, check it out. And um, yeah, I think you'll have a good ride. It's about five minutes long. So you get a really good idea of what it's going to be about. And one of the songs is actually on the trailer. So you get to hear the whole track. Okay. Well, thanks for the interview. Hey, thank you, my friend. I enjoyed it. This yeah. was fun. Yeah, this was a nice interview. This is Worldwide Entertainment TV.com's official Toronto rappers and hip hop documentary series. Learn the rich history of the city, see exclusive and rare footage, interviews, and concerts. Artists, models, and promoters, contact email wwetv at worldwideentertainmenttv.com for placements, advertising, and more.